We are getting a look at the reasons why police arrested a Carroll County man in connection with the Delphi murders. All of those details are in these documents, and we've been working to get these documents for a few weeks now. That's right, but we couldn't see them until the judge overseeing the case approved their release. That happened just a few hours ago. Now, we've been coming over these documents since then, working to see exactly what they reveal about the deaths of Abby Williams and Libby German. Now, so far, we have learned several new key pieces of information that investigators claim link Richard Allen to this crime. We've got live team coverage over the next 90 minutes. Karen Campbell's in Delphi for us tonight. But we want to begin with our senior investigative reporter, Bob Siegel, in our newsroom. Bob? Well, this probable cause affidavit does not say exactly how Abby and Libby died, but it does explain why investigators think Richard Allen is the man who killed the two teenagers. The probable cause affidavit says Abby and Libby were found dead in the woods less than a quarter mile from the Monon High Bridge, and there was a 40 caliber unspent round found between the victims' bodies, less than two feet away from Libby German. Investigators first spoke to Richard Allen back in 2017, and at that time, Allen told investigators he was on the trails by the Monon High Bridge between 1.30 and 3.30 on the day of the murders. The PC did not say why investigators spoke to him back in 2017. Then, last month on October 13th, investigators interviewed Allen again. According to the PC, Allen again said he was on the Monon High Bridge to watch the fish. He said he parked his car on the side of an old building and was wearing blue jeans and a blue or black Carhartt jacket with a hood. Investigators say that matches the clothes worn by the man who Libby captured in this video on the day of the murder. Last month, Allen also told investigators he owns firearms. That same day, police executed a search warrant at his Delphi home and recovered jackets, boots, knives, and firearms, including a Sig Sauer model P226 40 caliber pistol. He told investigators he never allowed anyone to use or borrow that firearm. Investigators sent that gun to the Indiana State Police Crime Lab for analysis. And it was determined the unspent round located within two feet of Libby's body had been cycled through Richard M. Allen's gun. Then, on October 26th, state police again spoke to Allen, and when asked about the unspent bullet, he did not have an explanation of why the bullet was found between the bodies. He again admitted that he was on the trail but denied knowing Abby or Libby and denied any involvement in their murders. One day later... Allen was charged with two counts of murder and has been in custody ever since. So his clothes, his car, his gun, investigators say all of them point to Richard Allen. Now this document references a lot of witnesses who say they think they saw the killer on the trail or near the bridge on the day of the murders. One witness reported seeing a man walking away from the area with clothes that were muddy and bloody. Another important point uh, here that we want to point out. This document mentions only Allen as being involved in the crime. But remember, last week in court, we heard the prosecutor say that another person could be involved as well. We'll keep asking questions about that. All right, Bob Siegel in our newsroom for us tonight. Thanks. And Scott, as we dug through those documents, one place was mentioned over and over again, the Hoosier Harvest Store. Take a look at this map. You can see it there on the right side of the map. This is not far from the Monon High Bridge, which is outlined in red right there. Our Karen Campbell is live for us tonight in Delphi. And Karen, these documents really mention several videos from the Hoosier Harvest Store. Yeah, and that's where we are. We are right now standing in front of this Hoosier Harvester. You can see uh, one camera there above my shoulder. It captured, of course, multiple people driving on this road. The trail, uh, the entrance to the trail is actually uh, not far down this road, right across from Mears Farm, who uh, a place that we've also heard about uh, in this document that was released to us. Now, investigators believe that through video at Hoosier Harvest Store, including interviews and electronic records, they believe Abby and Libby were dropped off across from Mears Farm at 1.49 p.m. Now, of course, the Mears Farm we mentioned not uh, just near the entrance to the trails. Investigators say they spoke with a woman uh, who said she was on the trail that day, February 13th, back in 2017. Now, video from this Hoosier Harvest Store captured her vehicle at 1.46 
traveling toward the entrance, again, across from Mears Farm. Now, she told investigators as she was driving on her way to park, she saw no other cars across from the Mears Farm. Now, video also captured her vehicle leaving at 2.14 p.m. She told investigators when she was leaving, she saw a car parked at the Old Child Protective Services building. Now, another person told investigators he saw a purple PT Cruiser or uh, what he thought was a small SUV type vehicle parked at that same building. Now, video from Hoosier Harvest Store also captured a vehicle that investigators say resembled Richard Allen's Ford Focus at 1.27 p.m. His vehicle was traveling west in front of this store. Now, Allen has always told investigators that he arrived at the trails around 1.30 p.m. And that he was on the trail that February day. Now, as we come back out here live to Hoosier Harvest Store, uh, again, investigators believe that Allen's Ford Focus resembled, again, the vehicles that uh, not only this camera picked up, but also uh, vehicles that were seen or, or seen by uh, uh, witnesses parked in front of that old CPS building. Now, again, Allen has maintained his innocence. His defense attorneys have told us that once we get a look at this uh, document, it will show that their client is innocent. So, again, that's something uh, that his defense attorneys are going to have to prove, again, now that uh, we know that there's video from this Hoosier Harvest Store. Uh, getting his uh, his Ford Focus on camera. Back to you. All right, Karen Campbell, live tonight in Delphi. Thank you. And we also wanted to get some legal perspective on these documents and what they say about the case against Richard Allen. Some of the new significant information included the fact that Allen was interviewed multiple times by police. So we asked defense attorney Jack Crawford why it took years between the first interview in 2017 and this year's arrest. There were a lot of people that admitted being in the general area at that time. It was a lot more crowded than we ever believed. Some other girls, some other adults. So the police couldn't narrow it down to Mr. Allen without the ballistics information, the match to the pistol. That pistol was key, he said. Crawford also says the bullet matching will likely be a point of contention for the defense at trial because in recent years, some have cast doubt on the science of pattern matching in forensic analysis. Also breaking tonight at 5 o'clock, Richard Allen's attorneys filed a change of venue request saying it's going to be hard to find an impartial jury in Carroll County. They want to move the trial at least 150 miles away from Delphi. Now we've put this circle here so you know what the radius looks like. As you see, it leaves only a small part of our state in far southern Indiana available for the trial if that request is approved by the judge. The largest counties there are Evansville and Jeffersonville. We wanted to let you know we also did reach out today to Abby and Libby's families following all of this breaking news, which obviously affects them personally. Right, and so far the family members who have responded have told us they are not commenting today. Well, it has been nearly six years since the Delphi murder, so I want to take a look back tonight at how we got to this point today. On February 13th, 2017, Libby German and Abby Williams went missing. Their bodies were discovered the next day. On February 15, 2017, police revealed this image of the suspected killer. On February 18, five days after the girls went missing, they were laid to rest. On the 22nd, police released this recording of the suspect's voice. On July 22, 2017, police released this sketch of the alleged killer. In September of that year, the girls' families went on the Dr. Oz show. On April 22, 2019, police released a new sketch of the alleged killer along with additional audio. On December 6, 2020, police announced a fake social media account had been talking to Libby German. On October 26th of this year, Richard Allen was arrested. On October 28th, Allen was charged with the murder of Libby German and Abby Williams. On October 31st, Police announced to the public that Allen was charged with the girls' murders. Our team is in the newsroom still looking into these newly released documents right now.